Good day. Welcome to the Interfaith Forum. With us in the studio to discuss the topic, The Existence of the Hereafter, our two highly esteemed guests, His Lordship, Most Reverend Lysias Ugoji, Bishop of the Catholic Diocese of Umahia. You are welcome, sir. Thank, Thank you, you very for coming. Much. Thank you, sir. <coughs> and Ustaz Abdul Fattah Adeyemi, Director of the Benya Kum Family Counseling Center, Abuja. You are welcome, sir. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank coming. you very much. My name is Abdul Hakim Ajijola, your moderator today. Bishop, yeah. thank you very much for uh, uh, coming on such short notice. It's appreciated. Um, what are your re beliefs regarding purgatory, um, judgment, heaven, and hell? Yeah, it is the teaching of the church that um, there are four last things. Uh, the first is judgment. When one dies, one faces judgment uh, and there are, there are two types of judgment the particular judgment that takes place immediately after death and then the final judgment when God will gather everybody all the creation and then everybody will be judged now after judgment uh, those who have been faithful to Christ believers those who have lived a righteous life will um, be granted entrance into heaven where there is a beatific vision of God. Uh, when we talk of heaven, we mean eternal life, eternal light, eternal peace, eternal joy and happiness. Then there is uh, also the teaching on purgatory. If one has died in communion uh, with God, uh, also in his friendship but still in a state of imperfection he undergoes purification a period of purification in purgatory so it is because God is all holy the totally holy one so anybody who is to appear before him has to be also holy so if there is any imperfection uh, we talk about venial sin in the sense of somebody dying in the state of um, imperfection. Then uh, he will be purified in uh, purgatory. Then uh, those who die in the, sa in the state of sin, namely those who are the wicked, the unjust, um, those who have turned their backs to God and the teachings of Christ, uh, are then going to be condemned in eternal fires of um, hell. So namely those who uh, live vicious lives and so on, like murderers, uh, extortioners, those who exploit other people, and so on. So these are, are going to be damned. And um, it's eternal damnation. So it's not uh, something that is temporal. It is eternal damnation mm -hmm. uh, for uh, the wickedness of um, uh, uh, such people. So if I understood you correctly, <coughs> um, you're saying from the Christian perspective, there are effectively <coughs> three levels. Um, you have the heaven, which is where we all want to go. Everybody wants to go <laughs> to heaven, yes. Then you have the hell where basically we don't want to go. Nobody wants to go there. And then you have, would I call it a transition stage or a gray area? Is, is, am I... Well, in between heaven and hell. Yes. That is, if somebody is wicked, totally wicked, unjust, he yes. ends up in hell. hell. Yes. And if somebody is righteous, totally righteous, then he ends up in heaven. Okay. So in between heaven and hell mm -hmm. is purgatory. Okay. It's a period of purification. Okay, so it's, it's, it's temporary. It's temporary. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. okay, I just wanted to clarify that. It's temporary, yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Ustaz, again, from your perspective, uh, what are your beliefs regarding these same issues of uh, heaven, purgatory, hell, the judgment, um, you know, and things like that. Uh, thank you very much. The uh, belief of the existence, that is, if these places even exist at all, is quite scriptural in Islam. Mm -hmm. It is uh, God that tells us so. That's our first point of reference. It says there's judgment. You always mention Yawma Eden, and sometimes 
he describes himself as Maliki Yawmiddin, the, the master of the day of judgment. And with that one, we believe that, okay, what judgment is he talking about? Who is he going to judge? What is he going to judge? It's all about the messages he has sent to us on earth. And he's going to ask how far we have gone about it because there are these two places. We have the here now and the hereafter. If there is a here now, then there will be a hereafter. There are consequences for what we do. There are results of our examinations. There are rewards of our good deeds. And there are punishments for what we have done that is wrong. The only thing is that God says he will not punish anyone until he has sent a message to that person, including he is speaking to that person by himself. Because there is this thing people generally call conscience. We believe that after God has sent the messengers, mm -hmm. and the messages have been read, recited to you, God also has a way of showing him some of the things by himself. Every creation of his is... Um, worthy of being in his presence mm -hmm. except whoever should drift away from that so we believe in the uh, existence of the hereafter because one of the articles of faith in islam there are six of them one is to believe in god almighty believe in allah the second one is to believe in the messengers of allah all of the messengers that have come a muslim must believe in them muhammad noah uh, david jesus christ a muslim must believe in these messengers, he must accept their messages. The problem we always have is, okay, what did he say? Did he say that? Did he not say that? But the thing is, you must believe that he but, was But, but if I may redirect in terms of the issue of the purgatory, yes. <clears throat> from an Islamic perspective, from your point of view, is there something equivalent to, uh, you know, what, what, what the, the Yes, has there said? is. Okay. There is an equivalent because okay. uh, there are many gray areas <clears throat> between white and black. And uh, you know, even though for the mercy of Almighty God, not everybody will be able to make it into heaven in the first mm. place. And if not for his absolute justice sometimes, nobody will have been thrown into hell if not that he has to be just because that's one of his names. He's the Al-Adil and is the Al-Hakim, is the just, is the judge, and you know, is the, wit is the witness and the judge at the same time. So there's no way a person can um, twist him in whatever deed of theirs. But with regards to purgatory, we, we call it the hour of. It is something like um, this person can make it to paradise, but has done so much bad, so much evil. And God, God will reward every single good deed that we have done. That is, even when you smile at somebody, and your smile made the person to have, no matter how momentary, the joy that person felt by the smile in response to your own smile or by some good words spoken to that person or somebody wants to light his candle you help the person kindle it all of these details will be rewarded so for god to be as just as he is whatever small evil deed we have done including when you spoke with your nose to somebody <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so in, in the process of that in the process of that because he has to because he promised that he will be just to all of us. Yes. If we did not remember to ask for forgiveness, okay. by the time we get there, we will face the consequences. Okay. Now, if I may uh, switch over to uh, Bishop. Sir, um, we, I think in all religions, there are a lot of scriptural statements. And one of the matters that arises is, should we take them literally or allegorically? For example, when we are told of the heaven being, you know, with milk and honey, or, or um, you know, uh, tea and you know <laughs> these wonderful I uh, images. Should we take them literally or allegorically? Well, well, depending on the text mm -hmm. or the context one is talking about. But uh, with reference to describing heaven uh, mm -hmm. as milk and honey, you know, milk and honey bring joy okay. to the human heart. So um, for, for one to describe heaven as um, a land of milk and honey, uh, it is in reference to that happiness, that joy mm -hmm. that one has. God has created all of us for himself. And uh, our hearts will, will never rest until our hearts rest in God. So there is an ever, uh, man continues to test after God. And it is when one enjoys this beatific vision, <coughs> namely seeing God face to face, that one realizes this fullness of joy, this fullness of happiness 
for which all of us test. Because in every action, whatever we do, we do that because we see that it is good, something that will give us happiness and so on. Mm. But at times, one might uh, uh, begin to look at something only because it gives happiness, but it could be contrary to the will of God. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, what is God's will in our life will we confirm to, to that and we are faithful to the will of God, then we are uh, uh, going to through God's mercy, we shall then enjoy this beatific vision, seeing God face so, to face. So, if I, if I may clarify, sir, we, we shouldn't really expect some of these things to be that literal. It, it, it just yeah, means a in this of context, mind yes. as opposed to, you know, the physical... Enjoyment of honey. Honey or, or milk. <laughs> okay. okay, good. Yeah. Um, Stas, similarly, f f from, from your perspective, um, the, the statements um, that you have made and the perceptions of the life hereafter, um, should we take them so literally or are we, you know, are, are, how, how, yeah. how really should M we? Most of these statements are quite metaphorical. Okay. They are ways through which God can speak to us in our own language using familiar enjoyment to appeal to our senses so that we know that we are not doing all of these good things in vain. Mm. For example, it's going to be very difficult to convince a blind person that a particular color is red or blue. There's no vocabulary in human language to tell a blind person that this color is blue because he has never seen blue before. He doesn't know what blue means. Mm. So we have never seen the hereafter before. We have never been there before. But the way God will make us understand is to appeal to us through the things we are familiar with. So when God says rivers of honey, I mean, or rivers of milk, you can you begin to imagine how many cows will have contributed to that. <laughs> <laughs> but nevertheless, that just makes us understand that whatever good thing of enjoyment, for example, the Arabs of desert those days, what was so uh, enjoying to them would be a garden, you know, where things are lushful, where things are fresh, everything is beautiful. Yes, th that kind of thing makes sense to them. In our own modern day world, now, if you want to talk about enjoyment, apart from... Uh, those of us who are strictly religious, so to speak, mm. some of the things of enjoyment, God says, do not forget your own portion of the enjoyments of the life of this world. For example, eating good food is good for everybody, every human being. Mm. But if you want somebody to um, save or, or you want to appeal to somebody with regards to what you shall get at the end of this, your labor, when you name a very good price mm -hmm. for that person's labor, it is likely in human understanding that the person want to strive hard and work harder in order to attain that goal. Many people really put a lot into Olympics and the rest because of the prestige <laughs> and so many good things there. So God mentioned mm -hmm. these things to us allegorically. No eyes has ever seen these things before. No ears has ever heard of them before. But when we get there, inshallah, we will say, Hadha ladhi wudhikuna min kablu. The Quran says the believers will see this and say, ah, this is, now we can understand. When God says honey, oh, this is what he means mm -hmm. by honey. When he says uh, pleasure, oh, this is what he means by pleasure. It is when we get there that we're going to see it. And that suspense is also very important. Okay. If, if I may take a cue from that, sir. Um, I think as Ustas has said, and I think even you have alluded to, we've never been there. Yeah. <laughs> um, as a Christian, sir, what makes you so certain that heaven exists? Yeah, we are a people who believe in the scriptures and believe in God. Whatever God says is truth. Mm -hmm. And uh, God cannot deceive. So we uh, believe it in the absolute authority of God, that God has revealed this to us and it is for us to say amen to it. So, um, and of course, you know that in African traditional religion, where you don't have, we don't have revealed, revealed scriptures, mm -hmm. uh, people also believe in the life hereafter. Mm -hmm. uh, in the sense that um, you see that people invoke the ancestors. They also uh, organize very good funerals for their ancestors. Because they believe that when they enjoy such um, funerals, mm -hmm. they will be received 
uh, in the land of the dead and given um, a place of dignity in the land of the dead. So even for us as Africans, we do believe in, in, in life um, hereafter, but more on the authority of God, who, can, who is true to himself. He cannot deceive, nor can he be deceived. Mm. But, but, but if I may take it a little further, sir, um, are you saying that as a Christian, it is an article of faith to believe in yes, it's heaven an article, and hell? Yes, so it's, it's an article of faith. Okay. I, at, the, at the beginning, I talked about the four last things, mm -hmm. namely judgment, heaven, hell, and then purgatory. Mm -hmm. okay. So these are all articles of faith. Okay, but having said that, I'm, I'm just trying to really drill down here. Um, we don't know of anybody who has evidence of hereafter. It, what I mean, it's a matter of faith. Yeah. And of course, you know that Christ mm -hmm. died and rose again. Okay. It's a part of our belief. And through baptism, we are born into Christ. Okay. And when we receive communion, the blood of Christ um, uh, streams through mm -hmm. our veins and arteries. Okay. So we, we are incorporated, as it were, into the life of Christ. And somebody who believes then in Christ, mm -hmm. since you are baptized into his death, you are also baptized into his resurrection. resurrection. Yeah. Uh, Ustaz, if I may ask you similarly, um, one, are you certain of this existence of life <laughs> after death? And if so, why? Are you, as a Muslim, why are you so, so certain? All oh, right. Y yes, uh, the first part of it is, I also mentioned earlier on, we have six articles of faith and mm -hmm. uh, I mentioned believe in God, believe in messengers, believe in the angels that they exist. God uh, has created them for some purposes. Believe in the holy books that God has sent. Believe in destiny, mm -hmm. that God has predestined things to be the way they are. And uh, he, has, he is the controller of what he has designed and destined. Mm -hmm. Then the last article of faith is believe in the hereafter. It is scriptural, it's mentioned in the Quran, it's teaching of the prophet and all the prophets of God that has ever come. They, they all had come at different times. They had spoken the same things, and we believe that they will not have uh, contradicted each other in any way. If that one alone, that one alone is an evidence that this person from there, that person from there, not all the prophets of God were Jews. So many of them were from one place or the other. Abraham was not a Jew, for example. He still said the same thing. So these people came and they claimed that God sent them, and this is what he said. And historically, we have seen that consistency. So that's one of the reasons why we have to believe that, yes, this thing must be true. Mm. Then when we talk about evidence, on whose criterion are we basing the evidence? Are we trying to put it on the scientific evidence to say, okay, seeing is, is believing? The religious people is another word entirely, and our evidence is sufficient when a man of God proclaims that this is what God has sent him to say to us. The scripture that is so infallible, we have been able to see that that is how it is. And because so many other things have been said that are true. Mm. So along amongst the, the things that God has sent to us and the prophets have said to us, and we have seen evidently that they are true, this one of the hereafter is one of it. Okay. And so we cannot push it out because we have not been there yet. Okay. And it's part of our faith and part of our belief that there is a hereafter the same way there is a here now. Okay. Sir, um, as we are getting into the winding down phase of, of our discussion today, um, as a senior man of the club, um, and what I say, a, a, a man who is well versed, um, if you were to try and explain to a non-Christian that from the Christian perspective, what is the purpose of life? Why are we here? Yeah, the purpose of, well, God has created us in his image and likeness, and he has created us also for himself. So namely, uh, the purpose of life is to enjoy uh, the beatific vision. That is namely to see God at the end of our terrestrial life. Uh, God has, like I said, has created us for himself. We continue mm -hmm. striving and our hearts will remain restless until our hearts rest in God. So um, the purpose of life is to inherit the eternal happiness in heaven. And everybody should strive towards it. Uh, that's the reward for goodness, the reward for righteousness. Uh, and conversely, 
if one does not uh, see God at the end of his life, then it's eternal punishment for the person. Mm -hmm. So uh, just to come back to your question, uh, we, we, God has created us for himself and uh, our hearts will remain restless if, we, if, if it doesn't rest or if they don't rest in God. So if one is separated temporarily in purgatory, there is also that uh, striving, there is that hope that one day he will uh, rest in um, God. Pass your exams. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for one, yes, sir. in hell, the fact that one has not attained that purpose for which he was created mm. is um, the punishment. Uh, and and if I may quickly follow up on that, uh, um, from a Christian perspective, what is the evidence uh, that of the mercy and justice of the Creator in, in terms of you know, some of these consequences sound very harsh, that you made a few mistakes on earth and forever you are now in hell. Um, does that speak to a just and merciful creator? Well, he had already uh, talked about it, that God uh, is seen and we believe God that he is merciful. Okay. Uh, nobody can attain eternal um, uh, joys without the mercy of God, because okay. we all are weak. We have our limitations. We are sinners. But when we sin and repent, God is merciful, and then he receives us. But if somebody sins and remains in his sin, turning his back against God, against the will of God, against the revelation of God, then uh, God will show that he is also a just God. Uh, so it's a matter mm -hmm. of choice. Mm -hmm. So, so we it's, it's our choice as human beings. Yes, the, the point is that God's grace is there, mm -hmm. always inviting us to himself. And it is for us who have been created free beings, rational beings, to, um, to respond to this grace or choose not to respond. So if somebody uh, chooses not to respond to this invitation, then it is his eternal choice, uh, which is eternal domination too. It's a, it's a very serious choice. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ustaz, similarly, uh, from an Islamic perspective, uh, as, 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 a, as an Islamic clergyman, if you were to try and explain to our Christian uh, viewers, from an Islamic perspective, what is the purpose of life and how can you explain the justness and mercy of the Creator based on our understanding that some of the consequences seem okay. rather heavy. Let me not seem drastic. Okay. Well, you are looking at it as if uh, the person being punished is a victim. He's not a victim. He chose it by himself. Very and similar. Yes, just like uh, what uh, my elder said. Yeah. You see, the, the purpose of creation, God says, I've created mankind and the genes, uh, some of the unseen world, so that they may worship me. You see, the whole of the scripture, the Quran itself, is a, the whole concept is about servant and worshiper. It's about God and his creature. What does he expect of us and what do we expect of him? And the person who comes to him, the Quran says, Illaman at Allah be called bin Salim. Anybody who comes with a clean and pure heart. In fact, when he was saying that, I thought he was quoting the Quran. <laughs> yes, whenever you come with pure heart. Mm -hmm. And then the Quran says, Kulia ayatu an nafsul mutma'inna irijeri ila rabbiki rodiya tamarudiya. O you heart that has found rest in me, return to me, being pleased with whatever I'm giving to you, mm -hmm. and I being pleased with you. So it is that pleasure of God that we seek, the face of God that we seek. The consequence of not seeking the face of God doesn't affect God in any way. If a person should kill somebody else, you have not killed God. You can't harm God. You can't hurt him. You can't cheat him. You can't render him um, helpless in any situation. The consequence is, look, the same God that created you as an individual also loves other creatures too. So if you kill his creature, you hurt his creatures, you maim his creatures, he is not supposed to find it so funny for somebody to do that to the thing he has created with his own hand. He cherishes every creature of his. So out of that love of his own creatures, if you hurt his creature, you have indirectly offended him. Okay. 
So when we talk about sin and the rest of them, it's not just against him as if ah, God should feel bad when I mm. do this. No, he doesn't feel bad at anything. But he's loving, he's caring, he's merciful, he's also just. And so if we begin to look at it in that viewpoint, we understand that anybody that does what is good has actually done it for his own self. Mm. And whoever has done what is evil has done it for his, for his own self. So like uh, my elder said, it is choice. choice. Mm. Yes, if, if a person is supposed to have his bath, let me quickly say this one, and then the person is presented in cold weather, presented with uh, cold water in one bucket and warm acid in another <laughs> bucket, and it is so labeled, and the person is told, go ahead and make a choice. You don't blame anyone for choosing warm acid because you don't want to feel cold. Well, uh, it's your uh, choice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid we have to round up right now, but uh, I hope our viewers will make it a choice to join us. All and right. I hope, sir, you will make it also a choice to come back. Thank you. And I hope you two will make it a choice to come back. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very well, much. Well, there you have it, friends, <laughs> colleagues, brothers and sisters. His Lordship, Most Reverend Lucius Ugoji. Sir. Thank you. Bishop uh, of the Catholic Diocese of Umahia, thank you very much. Thank for you also for such short thank We are you. very thank grateful. You. And uh, Ustaz Abdul Fatah Adeyemi, Director of the Banyakum Family Counseling Center, again on such short notice, thank you very, very much for coming. Pleasure is mine. Mm. Viewers, thank you for joining us today. Please join us in encouraging what is good and discouraging what is bad. Meanwhile, follow IFAP on Twitter at the hashtag IFAPNG. And on Facebook, follow Interfaith, Interfaith Forum, in brackets, IFAP. Send in your questions through Twitter or Facebook. May the Almighty be with us all. Meanwhile, keep the faith, keep the peace, till we meet again. Thank you very much.